Hi guys and welcome to another review video. In this video I'll be taking a thorough look at the Windsor and Newton Studio Collection coloured pencils. From the packaging and pencils themselves, the properties of the pencils and finishing up with a demonstration where I'll create a piece of artwork with this supply. As usual, I'll leave timestamps to key sections of the video and relevant links down in the description box below. So starting off by taking a look at the packaging. This set is presented beautifully in a transparent plastic case, showing the pencils inside. The information on the front is quite minimal, so alongside the brand name and the line name, we are told that these are soft, thick core coloured pencils, and like always, I'll be analysing these packaging claims later on in the video. Turning over onto the back, we have more product information in English, French and Spanish. The first bullet point describes these pencils as premium artist quality highly pigmented brilliant colours, which is a whole lot of information in one go. Next it says rich laydown and colour saturation, and finally it says excellent light fastness. Also included on the tin we have a little drawing of Windsor and Newton's Griffin logo, as well as some very tiny swatches of the colours included inside. I feel like the swatches could have been a touch bigger, but I appreciate that they are there anyway. And as you can see, this of course is the 12 set. At the bottom of the packaging we have some contact information and a symbol showing that these pencils conform to the ASTMD standards, so therefore are non-toxic. Removing the outer packaging we can now see what is included inside. I was a bit disappointed to see that there was no leaflet inside, considering there was very little information on the packaging, and I think that this would have been a great way to show the other products available in the studio collection, as when I purchased these pencils I saw that they also offered some watercolour pencils and some graphite sketching sets too. The back of this cardboard sleeve is plain, so there's no information inside, and again, I think they missed out on an opportunity to advertise and suggest some tips and techniques for these pencils. But I digress, the tin here is lovely, it has a very nice build quality to it, and is embossed with the Windsor and Newton logo. And inside the tin there's a plastic tray that seems to have done a good job of keeping the pencils protected. Now looking at the individual pencils, these pencils are made from Californian aromatic cedar and they have a 7.2mm round barrel with a reasonable 3.7mm wax based core. The build quality of these pencils seems to be good, despite being slim, my first impressions of these pencils are that they are robust and well made. I've also been assured that these pencils don't contain animal based products, which is also great to hear. The barrels are painted a light grey colour and each pencil has a long end cap to indicate the colour inside. The pencils are printed on one side with the Windsor and Newton name and logo in a dazzling silver, and the colour name is printed in black. The colour names are pretty small and the lettering is quite fine, so it could possibly be a little difficult to read at a glance. But I like the size of the end cap, as that makes it easier to find the colour you're looking for if they're all stacked together. Overall, I really love the understated and clean design of these pencils and the packaging, and they were very unique, eye-catching and recognisable in the shop that I bought them at. Anyway, moving on to these pencils' properties. First off, I'll swatch them out on the paper that I have in front of me here. I have a little selection to try them out on, as you can see, and as always I'll leave a list of my materials in the description box down below. On the left we have Canton Mittance in black. The Canton Mittance has two sides, the front side has a large honeycomb-like texture, but the reverse side, the side that I'm using, is much smoother with a fine tooth that I find ideal for coloured pencils. Swatching these pencils on black will give a great impression of how pigmented and opaque these pencils are, as the more pigmented and opaque they are, the more they'll stand out against this dark paper. In the middle I have some Clairefontaine Pastel Matte in white, which is my favourite paper to use for coloured pencil, and this paper has a special coating of cellulose fibres that gives an abrasive texture, which really pulls the pigment from the tip of the pencil. 
And on the right we have Strathmore's Toned Tan Mixed Media Paper, which has a smooth vellum finish. As you can see, the colours are highly pigmented and fairly opaque, so they stand out well even on the tan and black paper. This 12 set has a great range of colour, but is definitely biased towards the warm side. On another note, like most pencils, the end caps only serve as an indication of the colour inside, and the colour doesn't match exactly, so it's always worth referring to a swatch chart when choosing colours. The next property I want to explore is how well these pencils layer, and to investigate the pencils lay down a little further. Here I've created a long rectangle which I filled in using a very light hand, and I'll continue to layer on decreasing lengths of the rectangle so we can compare what differing amounts of layers look like in terms of the colours coverage and saturation. Overall, I was only able to create 5 or 6 different levels of saturation with simple layering, although the different paper types I used here did offer various levels of control. Because the pencil's pigment is rather opaque, once the pencil created a complete coverage on the paper, there was no going darker. In this sense, saturation is controlled by how much of the paper is left uncovered. The pencil's laydown is very soft and smooth and effortless to apply. Next, I want to see how well different blending materials work with these pencils, so I have some rough gradients drawn out here. First off, I'll be using the Zest It Pencil Blend to try to smooth out the gradient and create even coverage. I'm using a small synthetic filbert brush to help push the solvents around on the paper's surface, and the waxy binder dissolves really easily and I'm able to manipulate the pigments pretty well. The second blender I want to try out is the Derwent Blending Pencil, which is essentially a coloured pencil without any pigment. As you can see, the blending pencil does have an effect on the colour of the pencil on the black paper, but not on the Strathmore Mixed Media Paper as you're seeing here. And overall, the pencil does a very good job of smoothing out the pencil strokes to create flat colour. The final blending tool I want to try out is the Derwent Blender Pen, which is an alcohol-based blender for coloured pencils, and a colourless blender for alcohol-based markers should work exactly the same. As you can see, I'm not carrying out this test on the Claire Fontaine pastel mat, and that's because the coating of this paper dissolves and wipes off with strong concentrations of alcohol. The blender pen dissolves the waxy binder and allows the pigment to be moved around on the paper surface, similarly to the liquid solvents applied with a brush. It does become difficult to see the pigments on this dark paper when the binder is dissolved, but I'll come back to these charts later on to take a closer look when the solvents have dried. The next test is to see how well these pencils can erase, so I'm using the Derwent Electric Eraser here to see how easily the pigments lift from each paper. I was impressed with just how well these pencils are raised on the Matons and the Strathmore Mixed Media Paper, although the darker pencils did seem to stain the paper, as is expected with most coloured pencils. The pencils are raised very poorly on the pastel mat, and although some pigment did lift off, a lot of it got smudged around instead. Moving on, next I wanted to see how these pencils blend on their own without any additional blending products. So like I've done before on some of my previous coloured pencil reviews, I'm trying to create a colour wheel using primary colours. Here I'm using yellow and azure, and I chose to use two colours for my red, as the red in the selection is warm and the plum is very cool. This means that the plum mixed with the yellow would create a muddy brown rather than an orange, and likewise the red mixed with the azure would create a muddy purple. Overall, the colours mixed and blended fairly well, with a little bit of patience and strategic layering. Finally, I wanted to see how well the white performs underneath and on top of other colours. So here I have some boxes of True Blue, which I'm layering white on top of, first with firm pressure and next with lighter pressure. The white is surprisingly well pigmented and opaque. Often white pencils are a little lacklustre, but this one stands out pretty well. And to make use of the small amount of space in the bottom, I scribbled down some white strips to see how the white influences colours laid over the top. There is a slight tinting effect, but the other colours in the set are pretty opaque, so do well to cover over the white. 
Before we move on to the demo, I wanted to take a quick look at these test sheets now that they've fully dried, as well as having a look at a colour mixing grid I made using these 12 colours. So here are those blends again, and you can see that they look quite different now that they've dried. The smoothest blend is by far the Zest It on Pastel Matte, and on the other two papers, the Blender Pen and Zest It performed similarly to each other. The coloured areas have developed a wax bloom since I applied the pencils, and it only seems to be visible on the smoother Mittons and Strathmore. As you can see, the wax bloom creates a subtle, milky looking film on the surface of the pencil layers, visually similar to the dusty bloom that you get on fruit, such as plums or grapes. Similarly, it can be wiped off, so that's what I'm doing here with a paper blending stump. If you'd like an even closer look at these charts, I'll leave a link to my blog post about this review in the description box down below. And here I've made a rough colour mixing grid in my sketchbook where I've drawn out a 12 by 12 grid. Each colour has its own row and column, and so the squares are mixes of two different colours. This helps me to get a quick overview of what colours I can create just by mixing two different colours, and is a really handy tool to have if you only have a small selection of colours to work from. But now moving on to the demonstration part of the video, I'll start off by giving some insight about my choice of paper and how I go about using the products, and later on I'll go over some more detailed product specifics too. As you can see, I've drawn out a ladybird on some more Strathmore toned tan mixed media paper. Once I had decided that the piece would be completed on this type of paper, I chose to do my colour grid in a Strathmore toned tan sketchbook like you saw earlier, and the paper in this sketchbook has a similar colour and texture to the toned tan mixed media paper, but is thinner and more inexpensive. After completing that colour grid, I had a better feel for what colours I had and could easily mix, and given that there were lots of interesting red tones I could create, I felt inspired to draw a ladybird. I chose the Strathmore mixed media paper out of the three papers I trialled earlier for a variety of reasons. First of all, although the pastel matte yielded the best results, I didn't feel like it was a good match in terms of the intended purpose and audience of these pencils, which I'll explain later on in the video. As such, I felt that the Strathmore and Mittons were better suited, and between those two, I preferred the Strathmore for these pencils, as I felt like I was able to get the most control for the application of lighter and thinner layers. I began this piece by using my Prismacolor Color Raise pencils to sketch out an outline, and I used the grid method to improve my drawing accuracy. I then began the colouring by starting with the brightest white highlights to help preserve them and avoid colouring over them later. I then started lightly layering colour, first by mapping in some of the nuanced and subtle colour in the Ladybird's wing cases, and next mixed in more reds and oranges. To get a glossy feel, it's important to have sharp and bright contrasts and include the colour of the insect's environment in the reflections and highlights. Whilst working, I did find that these pencils were pretty fragile when sharpened to a narrow and sharp point, so they weren't ideal for fine details. I used the Zest It pencil blend solvents rather sparingly to improve coverage, reduce wax buildup, and to help merge my layers. I also used the Derwent Blender pencil to help burnish the pencil in some areas of lighter coverage, and I also used a paper blending stump or tortillon on the background to help create a soft fade. Later on in this piece, I used the brush and pencil touch-up texture mixed with brush and pencil titanium white pigment to really make the highlights pop against the toned paper, especially where I had covered over the paper with coloured pencil. You could get a similar effect using something like a white gel pen or Posca marker, but the drawback of these water-based products is that they don't properly adhere to the waxy surface of coloured pencils. This means that they are more prone to flake off, whereas the touch-up texture and titanium white mixture is archival and robust, as it properly adheres to the coloured pencil layers below, and can even be coloured over with more coloured pencil to adjust colour and detail. Anyway, moving on to a bit more about the product history and availability. I only heard of these pencils earlier in the spring of this year, 2018, after somebody had made a post about them in an art group I'm part of, 
At the time, there was very little information about the product, and the only information I could find at the time was on Michael's Art Supplies website, which also seemed to be the exclusive seller of these pencils. I did find it strange that there was no product information or marketing on Windsor & Newton's part on their social media or through their regular emails they send about their products, and there is no information about any of the Studio Collection products on their website either. Anyway, whilst I was visiting England over the summer, I went into a budget homeware store called The Range and noticed that these were being sold there, despite my impression that they were a Michaels exclusive. They were also selling the other sets under the Studio Collection line, including watercolour pencils and sketching sets. At the time of making this video, I've not been able to find any online supplier of these pencils other than Michael's, but I'll be sure to add other sources of the pencils in the description box below as and when I learn more. If you're really desperate for these pencils, I suggest keeping an eye out on online auction sites. I'd love to hear if any of you guys have found these pencils available elsewhere, and if you have, please leave me a comment down below, that will be really helpful. Because I wasn't able to find much information about these pencils online, and considering the packaging wasn't very informative, I went ahead and directly contacted Windsor & Newton so that I could provide some extra information for this review. As for set sizes, these coloured pencils and matching line of watercolour pencils are available in sets containing 12, 24 and 48 pencils. The Windsor & Newton spokesperson told me that they plan on launching larger sets, but at the time they couldn't confirm whether they had plans to sell these pencils open stock. I paid 15 British pounds when I purchased my 12 set from the range, and the 24 sets there were being sold for 30 pounds. At the time of filming, the prices seemed to be evenly matched on Michael's website, with the 12 set going for 20 US dollars and the 24 and 48 sets going for 40 and 60 dollars respectively. As such, these pencils cost £1.25 pence each, or $1.67 each, putting them at a similar price to many other popular professional brands on the market. And I can imagine what you are all asking me right now. Yes, but Claudia, are they light fast? This was my main concern about these pencils too, as the packaging only states that they have excellent light fastness. From my exchange with the spokesperson, I was told that they had performed quite well in the light fastness tests that they carried out, which didn't offer much help either. As you may know from my previous videos, light fastness claims only have a meaning to them if there's objective ratings comparable to international standards to back them up. So I asked Windsor & Newton if they could quantify these ratings. They told me that they'd pass my query on to the relevant teams, but I've yet to hear back from them, which really doesn't seem promising. And a lot of my conclusions about the product are based upon this fact, and if I hear any more information about Lightfastness, I'll provide an update as a pinned comment in the comment section down below. Without knowing what the individual ratings are for these pencils, I'd consider them a student grade or a craft supply. And this is essentially the reason why I chose not to use pastel mat for this demonstration. Pastel mat is an expensive professional grade material, and to me it makes little sense to use a product on it that isn't guaranteed to be light fast, meaning that the end result isn't up to standard for sale or display. The Strathmore mixed media and cancer mittens papers are very affordable by comparison, so I'm much more willing to use these papers for practice pieces. But moving on to the rest of the packaging claims for these pencils, the first claim was that these are soft, thick core pencils, which I can agree with entirely. I also agree with the statements that the colours are highly pigmented and brilliant, and that the pencils offer rich laydown and colour saturation. No doubt the pigmentation of these pencils is wonderful, they are bright and vibrant, and in addition their laydown is soft and smooth. But I can't really get on board with the claim that these are premium artist grade pencils. My opinion for coloured pencils is that if there isn't detailed light fastness information accessible and if the colours aren't available open stock, the product probably hasn't been designed to be used in an intensive or professional artist setting and is better suited for casual use. Moving on to the value for money of these pencils, I think that their price is pretty fair given the beautiful quality and feel of the product. 
In terms of laydown and pigmentation, they're on par with competitors of this price point. The main drawback is that many of these similarly priced competitors provide individual light fastness ratings for their products, and in addition to this they often rate pretty highly. I don't feel like these Winsor & Newton pencils really offer anything that their competitors don't unless you are won over by the sleek and minimalistic packaging, or if they're just more easily available or affordable to you than other brands. And if you're interested in finding out what pencils I own and have reviewed, as well as some light fastness comparisons between major brands, I'll leave links in the description box down below to my blog where I provide lots of useful information. So who would I recommend these pencils to? I think if these pencils are easily available to you, then they'd be worth picking up for something like adult colouring, sketchbook work, or for adding pops of colour in a bullet journal, or in any other situation where you aren't concerned about the light fastness or longevity of a piece. They'd be excellent for laying down base layers when colouring, owing to their softness and smooth application, but for more detailed work, I'd recommend combining these pencils with another brand, with a harder and more robust core. So that's about all I have to say about these pencils. If you have any questions, they're most visible written down below in the comments section, so please ask them there and I'll respond as soon as I can. Here's the finished piece. I'm really happy with the outcome given that I was limited to just 12 colours. The piece didn't take all that long to complete either, owing to the quick laydown of these pencils too. I'd love to hear what you think and your thoughts on the Windsor and Newton Studio Collection pencils. Don't forget to leave a like if you found the video helpful, and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to keep up to date with my future reviews and other arty videos. Thank you very much for watching, hope you have a lovely week, and I'll see you in the next video.